Okay, Fasci check model useful for parameterizing um, interest rates. Uh, if we wanted to look at the extent to which uh, interest rates mean revert, in other words, if we wanted to project uh, a relationship that captured the degree to which interest rates went up, but then came back to some kind of mean level. Uh, one relationship um, set out by Vasicek defines uh, a long-term mean interest rate. A long-term mean interest rate, a speed of mean reversion, and as interest rates change through time, uh, the speed of mean reversion will drive the interest rate back to some long-term mean and a random element is captured with a brown in motion where we look at a standard deviation and uh, a random element uh, in the model. To implement this model in Excel we could consider interest rates this is the Treasury, no, it's the Fed funds rate from 2001 to 2004. Um, and if we wanted to look at how interest rates changed over the period and impose a Vasicek relationship and estimate the parameter inputs, we could set out the change in interest rates. So DR here could be captured by the change between current time period minus the previous time period's interest rate and we could pull this down and uh, we want to estimate values for A, B and the volatility uh, in order to make this estimation we have to seed uh, initial values for the long-term mean, the mean reverting speed, the volatility. So these are just initial guesses uh, that we're going to work with. And we set this out here. So we basically have A and we F4 dot multiplied by B, our initial guess for the long-term mean. F4 to dollarize the cell reference. In other words, we lock the cell reference minus the current interest rate. Or the previous interest rate. And we return and we pull, pull down this range of values. In other words, we have one column where we have the actual change in the interest rate denoted by DR. And then we have to fit set out by these parameterized using these initial values. But these initial values are not likely to be true. And we have to estimate what these are. In order to estimate, we'll implement a maximum likelihood estimation technique. Um, but in order to implement the maximi maximum likelihood estimation technique, we have to estimate the error between the two. So we take the difference between the first column and the second column. And again, we pull this down to get the range of values. OK, now this particular implementation of maximum li likelihood estimation I took from uh, the Thomas Hull website. And uh, this is a fabulous source of uh, financial financial engineering models implemented in Excel and there's a whole range um, of models available for download from the Thomas Hull Company uh, website. We'll go back into our spreadsheet for a moment. Um, we need to estimate the error which we've just accomplished and we've defined this error but now we have to select the parameter values uh, parameter inputs that minimize this error. Okay, so in order to do that, we set out what's known as a probability density function. So we say we use the norms this function, 
norm dist and then using norms dist we identify the value we identify the value that we want to set to value 0 in other words we want to make the difference between the actual and the fit equal to 0 and we reference the standard deviation in the parameter inputs and we f for that to lock the cell reference so we f for that the cell reference is dollarized and the last um, input here we have to determine do we want a probability a kim to probability uh, value or do we want a probability density function and we go for the latter so we put in false close off the brackets and we pull down and in setting out uh, this probability, probability density function um, what we are trying to achieve in fact is we're trying to select values for the Vesicek model that gets us as close as possible to zero in other words we're trying to maximize the probability density function okay so when they in the optimization exercise uh, that we will implement using Solver in Excel, what we're trying to attempt is to get values of the error that are close to a mean of zero. And we're trying to maximize uh, A, B, and the volatility measure that gives us values that maximize the probability density function so we're going to try and get as close as possible to in effect a value of zero for the error to simplify the estimation then we go back into uh, excel and take the natural logarithm of each of the observations in the probability density function column. So we hit return and we drag this column down again. And then finally we take the sum of the log likelihoods and we pull it down and get the sum. Now, uh, in Excel, to run the optimization, we go to Data, Solver, select a value for the log likelihood, select values that maximize, select values of B, A, and the volatility that maximize this function here and if needs be we can set out constraints but here we just solve and the parameter values appear yes we accept and what we have is a value for the long-term mean we've estimated a value for a and a value for the volatility that minimizes the error in other words the difference between these two columns here 